Yeah, the third of uh, Mark Howard's trainers that he's put in the spotlight this afternoon is indeed Ed Dunlop. Uh, nobody had a more memorable weekend than Ed. Snow Fairy doing it yet again in the Irish Champion Stakes and what a filly she is. She, she's been a remarkable filly, hasn't she? To, to come back this season as well, when towards the end of last season, you wonder whether we'd see her again. Uh, having that lengthy spell on the sidelines from about November last year to August when she won in France and then to come back and to achieve what she did on, on Saturday to, to beat Nathaniel like that at Leopardstown. Remarkable performance from a remarkable filly and from a trainer who, who's just excelled really since he started training, especially with fillies. Yeah, that's the point you're making on this one. I mean, with, with, with other trainers, there's been different themes. This one is his touch if you like, with the ladies yeah. among the uh, among the horse fraternity. Yeah, very, very much so. A real ladies' man, hasn't he? And that, that's just been a common theme throughout his training career. Ouija board and Snow Fairy, they will be the real high-profile ones, mm. but there have been plenty on the way. Tarib, who provided Ed with his first classic in France as well, uh, going back a number of years now. But it's just been a constant theme, and he, he's just done, done such a good job with Snow Fairy to place her in the right races, get her back from injury, and then to, to, to turn her out as the very best at the weekend. And, and to win that at the weekend, Mark, relatively short time after a previous um, comeback, a win, it was it was a bold shot to go on Saturday. It was only a couple of weeks ago. It was. It was. I think it was 20 days, wasn't it, since since she'd won in France, where she beat. Um, th this is in our way where she beats the, the likes of Izzy Top. She doesn't get the clearest of passes through, and, and to come back like this as well, having been off as I say since I think November of last season, straight into Group One company. I know there's only limited races where, where a filly like her could go, but to come back and produce this performance, then turned out less than three weeks later to be, to be beating Nathaniel, to have the likes of St Nicholas Abbey behind you as well. Um, tremendous. Just shows how much ability she must have and, and how well she's been, uh, what a job Ed Dunlop's done with her. And apart from her, her obvious talent and her, her obvious sort of uh, abundant talent, what's great about this filly is her will to win. Look at this. I mean, the horse on the outside, Izzy Top, was over like a rash inside that final film. And she sort of burst her way through. She's got a real masculine sort of will to win about her, I think. She has. She could have She could have very easily thrown in the towel there as well. First, mm. run, first run back. Fitness could have counter out, but she could have caught her out. But she, as you say, she's got that will to win win and the fact she's so versatile as well she's won is it seven group ones and she's won seven, she's won five of those in different countries as well so the traveling obviously isn't a problem she might well go for the Prix de l'Art de Triomphe I think the Prix de l'Opera is mentioned as well during the same weekend so you look forward to seeing her again. Well, there's three of them, Mark. Snow Fairy, we've, we've, we've mentioned in, in fair detail. But ran in as well, and Tar Rib, who you've touched on. Yeah, well, Tar Rib provided Ed with, with his first classic when that was in the, the, the French 2000, 1000 Guineas, even back in 1996. Ran in, um, not the same sort of quality as, as the other two, but just a, an indication of how, what Ed's done with these fillies who progressed through the ranks. We've got some more as well who've progressed. They're, they're not absolute top notch fillies, but they progress from sort of low key handicaps to be competed in pattern races. Yeah, I mean, there was a very good filly. She's, she's going to come up on this graphic in a moment. I think Fraulein, who won the E.P. Taylor. Yeah, she was She was a very a very good filly. Um, it's a case of once they get one win against the name, they just seem to really progress through the ranks. She ended up winning, in, winning as you said, the E.P. Taylor as well. Um, Dragonier, the filly at the top, Again, she's progressed, she progressed through the handicap ranks. She's still racing now, um, but for, to go from 68 to 98 is an indication of good placing. Yeah, and Independence, the other one there, who um, had that uh, Sun Chariot win going back uh, in, in Ed's career a bit. But that sort of theme with Phillies has been constant, hasn't it, in Ed Dunlop's it career? It's not a case of he's done it with one or two. It's, it's not a fluke by any means. For, for whatever reason, he just seems to have a Midas touch with the Phillies. Yeah, let's take a look at um, a Ouija board then and, and her page as well, which is equally impressive. And a Ouija board as well, 10 wins from 22 races, and they weren't just any 10 wins. They amounted to three and a half grand in pri three and a half million in prize money. Yeah, and a bit like Snow Fairy, she she did it in various countries as well. Yeah. It wasn't a case of just just in your own backyard sort of thing. She went over, went overseas equally. Had two wins in the Breeders' Cup. That's just a sign of of what a top class filly and what a durable filly a bit like a, a current or a, what a stable mate now uh, snow fairy yeah without a doubt and again the same question towards the autumn of this career of, of this season now mark do you feel that ed can finish off well 
Well, it's no fair. You'd, be, you'd, you'd always be looking forward to seeing her on the mm. race course as well. Though. But outside just of her, sort of, sort of outside, it, it, I don't know how far she'll end up progressing, but a filly like Concise, who won at Kempton the other week, she looked quite a promising filly. She might just go for a sales race as well. But, you know, very much... Uh, the season's geared to geared around Snow Fairy, and she will probably mm. ultimately decide Ed's Ed's um, Ed's season. But just I just you can't you can't speak highly enough of what a job he's done with these sort of fillies to bring them back after injury, mm. lengthy spells on the sidelines, and to be competing. It's not as other competing at a low level either. No. The very top company to be beating a horse like Nathaniel. All right, he might not be at his best at the weekend, but he still took a good horse to beat him. Would you be fancying her chances if indeed she did get the green light for the for the arc? Well, you wouldn't be in a rush to discount her, would you? I think possibly a mile and a quarter might well suit her that bit more, and she might go for the pre lopper as well. She ran in the art last season. So the, the trip's a slight question mark, but all said and done, she's won two classics over a mile and a half. Yeah, she owes nobody anything, but that is Ed Dunlop in the spotlight, and particularly in the spotlight because he's something of a ladies' man.